I'm Michael Spencer, and I work for Sony uh, on the PS4, on the compiler toolchain for it. Specifically, I work on the LLVM linker. And uh, that's actually how I ran into my issues with alignment and uh, was discussing it with uh, Marshall and uh, suggested that I gave a talk here. So I uh, came. Um, so I'm going to talk about, first of all, is C++ and C++ alignment in C++11, how to use it, uh, some of the major limitations of it, and both current proposals and some uh, future proposals for how to fix it. So first, the standard. Um, most important thing, or the most fundamental thing, is SVD max align T. Uh, everything's based on, or defined in terms of this. And it's a POD type whose alignment requirement is at least as great as that of every other scalar type and whose alignment requires support in every context. So this means you, um, the alignment of this thing is the max you can have anywhere. Or sorry, is the max that is required to be supported everywhere. Uh, so we have two different alignment forms. We have a fundamental alignment, which is less than or equal to uh, max line, or line of max line T. Then we have extended alignment. Uh, this is anything that is greater than uh, max line T. And a, and a type with, this, with an alignment greater than max line T is called an overaligned type. Uh, so, first operator is uh, a line of. This takes a type ID, which is basically just a name for all the different ways that you can spell out a type. It returns an integral constant expression of size T. Uh, but there's a bit of weirdness with it. It's kind of similar to size of, where when it's applied to a reference type, the result is the alignment of the actual referenced type. Um, but also when it's applied to an array type, it is the alignment of the element type, which is almost always the same as that of the array, but sometimes it can be different. Uh, so here's an example. The line of is pretty simple. Um, you can assign it to a const expert, you can pass it to template. Not much else to align of. Align av. Align as. It's a pseudo attribute. It's defined with all the attributes in the uh, standard, but it does not have the same syntax. Uh, it doesn't have the brackets around it. Uh, it applies to variables and data members, and also to classes and enum declarations. Uh, so align as, there's two forms. The first is the uh, uh, with those things, um, braces. Wait, yeah. Parentheses. Parentheses. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it takes an assignment expression. And this is either, uh, sorry, sorry, it has to be an integral constant expression. Um, a fundamental alignment always works. An extended alignment is implementation supported, and in each context it can have a different maximum uh, extended alignment. And zero has no effect. It's as if the attribute was not there. Uh, the other form is type ID. And it's just equivalent to a line of, a line as. Um, when you have multiple a line as on a, a declaration, it, is a, it takes the strictest alignment. And you cannot under align. So this is ill-formed, assuming that your int is not aligned to 1. I don't know anywhere that it is, but I think it's possible. DSPs. Fun. <laughs> OK. Um, oh, yes, he said that it, was, uh, it can be that on DSPs. So this is an interesting part, lots of wording. Uh, basically, this is stating that this is how you deal with four declarations. If you define a struct as, um, or anything, as having an alignment, the for declaration can either have that or not have it. However, if the definition does not have an alignment, and you specify that in the for declaration, this is ill-formed. And the compiler diagnostic, if it's in the same translation unit, if they are in a different translation unit, it's no diagnostic required. Um, can you repeat that? Sorry? If the original definition of the struct, maybe in some .cc file, had 
had the LINS, but someone at that age probably just had the, the forward declaration without the LINS. Would that be okay? Would that be well formed? Uh, well uh, yes, that is well formed too. Oh, sorry. Repeating the question. If you have uh, essentially this in a CPP file and this in a header file that never sees or may or may not see that definition, is that still well formed? And yes, that is. And that's because for an incomplete type, you can never observe the size and alignment. So it doesn't matter. <coughs> so new. New has some interesting uh, things when it applies to alignment. Uh, new always returns memory aligned to a line of std max line t, except you're allocating a char array or unsigned char array. And this is specifically spelled out just these two types. And in that case, it depends on the size. Specifically, the alignment is such that the, um, it is the maximum alignment of the maximally aligned type of that size. So if you have, if you're allocating an array of one, of char array or unsigned char array, that can have an alignment of one. Uh, what about signed char array? Uh, what about signed char array? Just about to look that up. No. It specifically says char and unsigned char. Right, so and I did not cite the standard here, but yeah. It's okay. I can look it up then. I can open a book. Thank you. Um, so. It is implementation to find whether over-aligned types are supported. Now you'll notice, if you look at new, you cannot possibly allocate, it cannot possibly observe the alignment. Uh, global allocator new doesn't know what it is. Um, however, it also states in the align, uh, so 3.11 is the section on alignment, and it says that a request for runtime allocation of dynamic storage for which the request, requested alignment cannot be honored shall be treated as an allocation failure. These seem to contradict, however, um, I was discussing this earlier with some people, and this can be taken to mean it has like a fundamental alignment, and that is the intent of the section. Yes? The current working draft says that uh, the types char, char, sign char, and unsigned char shall have weakest requirements. So that's uh, C++ 14, or the newest draft? This is the, the current draft as of last month. OK, yes. So the um, the. I think the, the FDIS for um, C11 mm -hmm. does not include signed char. I, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yes. Uh, so he, he stated that the uh, newest draft uh, includes signed char. So somebody, somebody has updated. Yes. Yes. So in reality, when you are allocating an over aligned type with new, you will most likely not get that alignment. You may accidentally get it, uh, but you're not likely to get it. I actually have three questions. <laughs> so over-aligned type is when you specify explicit alignment that is greater than what is actually required. Is that um, <coughs> It is not just what's greater. Oh, sorry, he, he asked, is, is an over-aligned type a type that is has an alignment greater than its original alignment, as if you did not have an align of. And if we go back to the definition, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, I, it's no. A, the only extended alignment is if it's greater than max align t. If it is a line of max line t. If you assign one that is less than that, it is not an extended alignment or an overlined type. It is a fundal, is fundamentally aligned type. Uh, you had more? Yeah, I have two more. Can you go back to the last slide? Uh, uh. No, not to the one where you were initially. Oh. So this uh, statement that the alignment of new car will be at least as aligned as the number of characters that you allocate, is it so that you can allocate a piece of memory like that and then construct 
an object with displacement here. So the question is, is, is the definition of char aligned, or of char pointer, wow, sorry, char array, an unsigned char array, uh, dependent on the size so that you can allocate specifically for an object to do like placement new, right? Okay. Uh, yes, there is a note in the standard that specifically says that. Um, but it is not actually, it's not aligned to the size. It is aligned to the, so you take all the uh, objects of that size that can exist, and the one with the highest alignment is the alignment you get from this. I think what we're talking about is natural alignment. What we mean is, if, it's, if you're asking for something of size one, then it's gonna be bite aligned. If it's size two, it's short aligned. If it's size three, it's bite aligned. If it's size four, it's quad bite aligned, and so on. Five is bite um, aligned, no? So he's asking if this was based on the, the natural alignment, for instance, so for example, three would be byte aligned. Uh, it's actually not, it is the largest that fits. Um, I can go grab the standard reference. Uh, it's but, okay, but what, is, what I just described is at least the, the advantage there is if, if you're creating an array of objects, right, then, then, it, then this will actually do something useful. What you described, I'm not sure what you would use it for. Like there was some reason somebody had this idea. And what I just described, we do all the time. Mm -hmm. I was hoping maybe this was that. No. Oh. If, if you allocate more than max line, a line of max line T bytes, you will get uh, max line T memory. So imagine that you have a union that contains three characters inside of a struct as one of the members of the union and contains a short as one of the other members of the and you would like to place with you that over a character array return by operator mu. That sounds pretty bad. That's why you would want to align the, the character array of link three coming back from mu for short, not for care. Because you can place a short inside of that memory. Okay. So Chandler is stating that um, a case where you would want this is when you have, for instance, a, a short and then three characters. Uh, your size, assuming short is two, is whatever that adds up, five. Um, so th if you took like the natural alignment, this would be alignment of one. However, you need to be able to, alloc uh, to placement new your short there. So it has to have that alignment. So it has to be at least that. Uh, library allocator requirements. Uh, this one's kind of fun when I ran into this one. So if the alignment associated with the specific over align type is not supported by an allocator, uh, instantation of the allocator may fail. Uh, the allocator may silently ignore the requested alignment and it may also throw bad alloc. So when you're using, so this is the actual allocator requirements, not just SC allocator. So if you are using an unknown allocator, uh, you, ha you do not know what behavior you're gonna get. Um, Explain that one, Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> this is for no. over <laughs> Yes, this is only for over types. types. Anything beyond what is considered to be in the Anything over a line of max line T. Okay. Yes. So this is essentially saying that if a type is over a line, <laughs> then these, you know, things just may not work. That's kind of uh, the idea. Seems. So he's asking if this means that if you have an overline type, that basically just won't work. Uh, that's true. But it, it's, it is defined, so you have the set of behaviors, and you can check for all these behaviors, but it's not very useful because none of this behavior is, is very useful to you. Uh, so now we're going to get into the library parts. Uh, alignment of. This is a nice little template that has the value of a line of. Um, I don't think it has any purpose at all, except for to be a longer form of a line of. Uh, next one, SD align. This one's fun. Uh, basically, the purpose of this function is, sorry, Chandler has a question, or comment. Can, can you, uh, can't you explicitly specialize that template for your type? Technically, you can. The standard actually has this written out. Um, you need to repeat. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, so Chandler was asking if you could specialize this for your specific type to have a type greater than what a line of would return. I'm not sure how to interpret the standard in this case. It, it has exactly this. Like, this is the definition. What I'm trying to suggest, this is a bug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, likely. Uh, so yes, uh, SED line. The, the intent of this function is really so that you have, uh, you have like a static, statically, or sorry, a, um, uh, like a, you have an array of characters and of, of a static size and you want to use this for your custom allocator. You may have also dynamically allocated it, but you know its size and you have a pointer to it. So the intent of this is that you can repeatedly call this to get new uh, um, aligned memory and it will automatically update space and pointer and then either return null if there was not enough space left to give you that alignment or returns the newly aligned pointer. It does not up, uh, increase pointer for the size. It only brings it up to the alignment. Uh, Microsoft's implementation kind of missed this detail and will increment pointer also with size. Um, also, GCC does not implement this. So only libc++ does that I know of. Oh, also another important thing about this. This is the only way to observe alignment of a, of a pointer. Um, the, since the, actually I get into this a bit later, but since the uh, repre uh, value representation or object representation of a pointer is implementation defined, casting it to something that you can uh, look at the bits, like uh, do a modulo on, uh, that changes it, or is allowed to change it. So this is the only way to observe alignment. Next we have align storage, which is just this. Pretty much what the standard stand says this is a possible implementation. Basically just that uh, the nested type it has is a POD type with the alignment and size uh, specified in the template arguments. We also have aligned union. Uh, this one actually confused me. I almost didn't include this because the uh, draft directly before the C++11 release has this one deleted, but the actual C++11 standard includes this. <coughs> and this is a very active template. You pass a lot of types, um, and you can implement it like this. Here we do a very active expansion of align as, um, and it and due to the rules stated earlier, it picks the most aligned. Uh, type to specify the alignment of. It also requires you to be able to access the alignment value, which you can do in a line of type. Dumb question. Mm -hmm. Dumb question. Why is it a union? I don't see union. Okay. So the point of, uh, sorry, so why is this a union? Or why is it called a union when there's no union here? The point is that this is to implement an um, a union that does not have constructors um, of non-POD types. Uh, even though you can do that in C++11 now, this is an alternative way to do it, in which some cases you actually want to do because of the rules of union construction and destruction and whatnot. Um, basically, the point is, is that so you have a, you're implementing variant, and you have all these types. Uh, so you can either do a union and deal with <coughs> the construction and destruction, or you can Use this, pass all of those types directly into the construct or to the template argument, and then do placement new and delete. Uh, or, sorry, placement new and then uh, destructor on this. So that's why it's a union because it's basically a alternative form of union. So miscellaneous said this earlier. The value representation of pointer types is implementation defined. This is why you cannot observe the alignment except for with SCD align. Now, every implementation I know of, ca casting to uint pointer t and observing the alignment that way works, and that is how SCD align is implemented. But according to the standard, that's the only way. Yeah. So uh, some examples of using it. So we know we only have one way to observe alignment. So how do we do that? Because the arguments are weird to SCD align. Here's a very short example of how to do it. Um, we take it as a template argument and spe specify the alignment that we want to check for. Um, we 
create a size, and it, can, it needs to be large enough that this does not, that SCD line thinks that there's not enough space left. So I just assigned it to max. Uh, then we need to copy pointer over because we do not want to <laughs> modify pointer. Um, then we can call SCD line and see that the return value is equal to our input value. If it is, it's, it is aligned to that alignment. Otherwise, it's not. Why do you need to copy? Because SCD align um, modifies this parameter to point to the beginning of aligned memory. And if, if your original pointer, oh, actually, yes, we don't. Well, sorry. Ignore that part. We need to keep the original because we need to see if it, get, if it got modified. That makes sense? Good. Uh, so now I have an implementation of the world's worst optional, but that actually works. Uh, so we have a type. We can set it. Um, first, you have to destroy because it's already there. Aligned new into storage. Actually, first, let me go down here and say, um, this is an example use of aligned storage. Um, we have T, it's the size of T and the line of T type storage. And now we can uh, new and uh, delete directly out of that. Um, so here's our new and set to exists. To get it, you can legally reinterpret cast and dereference. Uh, missed a line break there. <laughs> But on destruction, you need to destroy it. Destroy is just, uh, so if you exist, uh, don't destroy. Otherwise, you can reinterpret cast and call a destructor and say it doesn't exist. So it's a pretty simple implementation. Um, missing copies and moves and lots and lots of things. But this is the base of if you need to write um, something like this where you uh, need to dynamically, or sorry, um, where you need to, need to have it or not have it or have different types. This would be a similar thing for variant. Uh, you'd, you'd use aligned union, and you'd have similar logic, but just for lots of different types. Uh, next is underaligned access. So C11 doesn't add anything for this, but it's important to realize that this is how you should do underaligned access. Um, so you have a, um, so you memory map the file, which is implementation defined, whatever, or you read a file in, uh, you don't know where it is, um, the alignment, but you know that you want to read in it 32. You do a mem copy. Uh, mem copy is the only operation, well, mem copy and mem move are the only operations allowed to do this. Uh, nothing else is. Um, and then write, very similar, just mem copy. Now, uh, who can tell me what x86 assembly instructions this is going to generate? Who said that? Right. Move. That's it. There's no reason to do weird other things. X86 optimizer this is trivial. Uh, your issue is, if it is really underaligned, this is always going to be the fastest you're going to get. For example, an arm, this is actually going to be a series of byte moves, because you don't have unaligned access. Um, and later I'm going to get into ha what happens if you actually happen to know that it's aligned and you still want to do this. Uh, so next is aligned allocation. So you actually do want to do, so if you happen to need to do an aligned allocation, uh, this is pretty much the shortest way to do it. Um, we take a size and alignment. Then first we have to figure out how much size we actually need to allocate. Because we only know that new, or malloc in this case, uh, is going to return uh, max line T aligned. So we take the size plus the alignment plus a uh, pointer, which we will later store this malloc result into, minus what we know the, ma the alignment is going to be. This gives you the smallest alignment, uh, the smallest space that actually, um, that you know you will be able to move your pointer uh, to have it aligned. Uh, next, you make sure that you allocate it right. Uh, this is interesting. Right here, we're, we're first making sure that we have enough place, enough space to put the pointer. Because we're going to store the pointer directly before the, the pointer that we hand back as the aligned alloc. Then we use SCD align to um, actually align this pointer. Because again, that's the only way to do this. Um, and this cannot fail by definition. Um, then we placement new 
a um, void pointer directly before the memory we're about to return, and then return it. Um, I assume this is only valid if alignment is greater than the max alignment t. Is it? Uh, yeah, I actually thought about that, but then forgot to check. I'm not sure. Um, sorry. This is, uh, is this only valid if your alignment is greater than max line t? And yes, actually, this needs to be changed to uh, min of alignment and a line of max line t. Yeah. If, it, if the alignment is less than max line t, you can just return whatever my log is. Uh, the reason you can't do that is because of the next slide. Um, is there a reason to use malloc instead of operator new? No. I just wanted to show. Oh, is there any reason to use malloc instead of operator new? No, I just wanted it to be shorter. Um, you know, allocator new wants, wants a type. I mean, you could just, you could new cares, but. Yeah. And it's going to want all operator new. No, they were saying operator new. Global operator new. Ah, yes. The global operator. Okay. Mm hmm. He said that this alignment of the pointer cannot fail by definition. But what if I pass as alignment one, for example? Uh, then assuming that this was right, that, that we fixed this up here, so that you actually had enough size, uh, then you're still fine. Uh, sorry. Um, what would happen if I passed one in as alignment? Uh, would this still be valid? Yes. Assuming we fix that up there. Yeah, we bump it right here. But it, it will be valid because my lock will always return at least max aligned memory, and that is by definition greater than the alignment of a point. Is, the, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Usually, you're doing size plus size of by pointer minus size of pointer. That probably will do nothing there. Max line T will probably be exactly that. Um, so, uh, Chandler? Max line T is 16 byte line, not 8 byte line pointers or 8 byte line. This is going to say 664. Um, the other thing to point out is that this, this can fail if the size is sufficiently small. Um, if you can, and the alignment is small, because you can end up allocating fewer than 16 bytes of memory. You might not have the alignment for your point star. I'm telling you, we increase. Malloc and 32 bit returns eight bytes. Yes. Not 16 by five. Which which platform? X86 32 bit. Um, that <coughs> pins a lot. Implementation defined. Yes, that's very implementation defined. Uh, a lot of modern money systems have already moved to switch to 16 by alignment because it's SCP. Uh, so the discussion was about um, the actual value of max line T, which is different on different platforms. Um, also, another bug. Um, I actually did not test this with very small allocations. I did test it with larger ones. Um, is that this actually needs to be the um, minimum of alignment, a line of void star, and max line T. Wait, minimum? Maximum? <laughs> just state the problem that he's pointed out and figure it out later. Yeah. Technically, you do not need this. You just waste a little bit of memory. Um, yeah. So then, freeing this, we jump back a pointer and uh, pass that to free. And dereference and pass that to free, because that's where we just stored that pointer. Um, there are smaller implementations you can do. For example, if you know your alignment is not going to be the maximum range of memory, you can store a smaller value here and do an offset from your current address. Um, also, if you are willing to pass your alignment into align free, which in C++ generally you can because we have objects and we track things like that. So we generally we also have the alignment when we're 
deleting something or freeing it. You could dynamically base your size, but these are pretty small optimizations. Uh, so next are cache line align. I actually added this slide after uh, uh, last talk in Flug. Um, so you have this. This is great. Your thread data, but of course you have false sharing. <laughs> yeah. So what you may be tempted to do is this. Uh, still into the vector. But uh, who can tell me why this is wrong? Vector's not going to allocate it right. Oh. Well, possibly because cache line could be larger than the line of max line T, which means all of it will be ignored. Yes. And actually, that actually reminded me of another thing. Uh, sorry, he said that it might be larger than max line T, so it would be ignored. So yes, that's why uh, one reason. Uh, another is actually this may not compile if your platform doesn't support it. But of course, you're doing cache line align stuff. We're assuming that you're already in platform specific land. Um, but yeah, so you can't allocate it without a custom allocator. So you're not totally without uh, a way to do it. But you have to be careful. Um, you could use padding. Uh, so technically, you will get the right separation. But on access, you'll have wrong behavior because you're accessing it at a misaligned address. Even though this, the alignment of these elements, like your processor's not going to care, it's still undefined behavior. So uh, current extensions. Built in to assume aligned. Uh, GCC is the only compiler I know of that implements this. Um, actually, ICC might also. Um, and basically, this provides, it doesn't change anything about the pointer. All it simply tells, it, it tells the optimizer that this pointer is aligned to a specific alignment. Um, so here's an example. If you do this, like if you check if it's aligned to 32 and then do this on GCC, compiler will optimize it assuming that the data is aligned to 32. And this can means it can vectorize better because it can skip the pre-header. Um, it can also do SSE without pre-headering, etc. Um, so we also have some current proposed extensions. Does not? OK. Um, we have plans to support it in Clang and LLVM, but I don't think it's in yet. Uh, so current, we have a dynamic memory allocation for overline data in 3396 by uh, Clark Nielsen. This simply adds, it actually adds eight. I skipped the uh, no throw versions. Um, it just adds a. AlignVLT alignment. AlignVLT is just a f uh, using the enum trick, uh, the uh, enum class with a defined storage type trick, so that it doesn't, um, so it's not ambiguous or collide with existing uh, custom operator news. Uh, the semantics of this is that if you ha if you are allocating an overlined an overlined type, it will first try and look up this. It'll do size and then alignment. If that fails, it will fall back to the normal. Um, I don't think that this is great behavior because you still can't trust that new is going to return aligned memory. Um, but that's the current proposal. Uh, so the next thing is what I've been thinking about. That's adding alignment to the type system. Because um, some of these problems earlier, and the fact that built-in assume aligned is it does not propagate very well. Um, if you have boundaries, um, like uh, transition unit boundaries and et cetera, it obviously can't see through that. And you have to spread it around. And you have no documentation of, um, other than comments that, it's a, that you're assuming an aligned value. Um, templates can't, well, templates can. But, um, and you can't specialize on alignment. There's lots of things that you can't do. And we want to be able to do these things because it matters for performance. It also matters for correctness, uh, especially um, 
what I care about is a Borgium PS4. We have lots of line data heading to the GPU. We'd like to have safe interfaces. Uh, so the first things, a couple things we need to do to allow this. We need to allow an expression form of a line as, or a line of, sorry, which is equal to the alignment of its operand. This is basically the uh, same form as unary, uh, unary size of. Um, we also modify the type ID form to when you apply to an array, the result is the alignment of the array itself, not the element type. So uh, first thing, type align. It's a new type qualifier. It's a part of the type, shows up in mangling, uh, shows up in uh, uh, overloading and uh, template instantiation. Um, and it follows the inter attribute syntax for what it applies to, similar to a line as. And the reason we can't change or you reuse a line as is that it already has semantics, and these break those semantics. The modification to a line of doesn't, and to the uh, array, because before there was no way to observe an overaligned array. But this adds a way to do that. Um, so you have int a, or int star a. Now you have a pointer to an aligned, an overaligned int, or actually, sorry, an aligned int. Here you have a aligned pointer to a non over, uh, to a non specially aligned int. This is ill-formed. Um, the, for those who don't know the attribute syntax, it binds to the left. And if it's all the way to the left, it binds to the named value and all named values. So if you had commas, it would apply to all of them. Um, but this is a type attribute. It can't be applied to a declaration. Um, so that's ill-formed. That's also ill-formed, because those are equivalent. Um, oh yes. So we have this. Line of A is the line of uh, its star. Line of dereferenced A is 16. This is a significant difference from a line as. Oh, you can't line as a type. Um, now you have this. A line of B is 16, and dereferenced is the same as a line of int. So we're going to go back to our read int example. So sorry, one second. OK. So imagine you're reading an ELF file, which specifies that the types are aligned. Depending on the uh, L32, L64, you have like 8 byte and 4 byte aligned, or also depending on the size. Uh, so you know this, but the compiler doesn't know this. Um, and this is the only safe way to do a copy. You can't just cast to, a, you can't reinterpret cast to an int and load it. Uh, not safe. So to do this, um, we need to add yet another special type. Aligned pointer. It's another type qualifier. Only applies to pointers. Um, notice that it does not change the alignment of these values. Because that's not what it's doing. What does it do? Uh, the value of p shall always be aligned to 32. It is specifying a constraint on the value of the pointer. Because of this, you cannot call operator plus equal, minus equal, plus plus, minus minus, because these would change the value. And you have two options here. You either allow it and make it go jump 32, which is very confusing and would be very easy to break because you passed it into a uh, algorithm, you'd just get the wrong behavior and you wouldn't know. Um, operators plus and minus work, but they return just in pointer. They drop the align pointer qualifier. So it is not an iterator. Um, it is implicitly convertible to an aligned of pointer of weaker alignment. So you have a 32, you can do it to 16, you can even do it to nothing. But assigning p from a is ill-formed. Um, so how do we create these to begin with? That's why we add, oh wait, sorry, for a second. So back to this example. 
we want to modify this to uh, know that the, val that the buffer it's pointing to is already aligned. So we do this. It's aligned to line of int32t. And then same as before, this time the compiler will, even on ARM, is going to generate your 4-byte load. Now we need a, a safe way to increase the alignment. Um, so we add this line pointer. Uh, takes a uh, argument for the size. It dynamically checks that P is aligned and either returns a null pointer or P with the type modified to line pointer. Uh, we also need an unsafe way. And we're using const cast because that's what vaults does. Um, you could add it. I don't, you could add a new keyword, but I don't see the reason. Um, so, so here's an example actually reading aligned in 32. Um, so assume that you you have an interface boundary. This is just an example of where it would fail. Uh, you generally wouldn't write code like this. You'd want to propagate this throughout. Um, this is just a shortcut to fit on the slide. So we have the alignment. Um, so you define your align pointer and type of that. And make sure that it actually was created. <coughs> You're asserting that B is aligned. Um, then you can just do return, read aligned in 32. And this is where it gets a little weird, because you cannot increment B. Um, sorry, you cannot increment um, P without dropping the uh, qualifier. So you have to call aligned uh, align pointer again. Um, one of the things you do have with an align pointer is the array index access operator, which is generally how you'd use it. So you wouldn't have any of this weirdness. You just access it with array indices, and it works. And um, that's it. Any questions? I guess not.